Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you a simple workflow for removing any background of a portrait photo. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.28 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of free video tutorials on here. You can check out my latest clips, and I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I will include a discount link in the description of the video. Plus, you can get more content by becoming a DMD Premium member, and I'll include a link to this, as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is the photo I'll be using for today's tutorial. Just come over here, click the down arrow. I went with the 1920 by 1280 version. If your computer can handle it, go with the original size. However, this process will be pretty memory intensive and GIMP doesn't tend to work very quickly with larger images to begin with. So I do recommend going with the large image if possible. So just click free download. So here is one rendition of this method. I have the background removed. Here is another color background I used, and of course here is the original. So I'll start by opening up the original image, so I'll just go to my file explorer and click and drag my image over here to the little Wilbur icon in release. And I will convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space, it doesn't really matter, but I will do that. First step is going to be to duplicate this image, so just click the duplicate icon. And double click on here and rename this BG removed, hit the enter key, and double click on the bottom layer and rename this original, hit the enter key. The first tool I'll be using for my workflow is the paths tool, but like I said, we'll be using a few different tools here. So let's come over here to the paths tool inside of my toolbox. And what I'll do is hold control, zoom in. I want to outline the main portion of my subject and then the main portions of the hair, but not the details of the hair. So really focus all of your efforts on the actual portion of the model until you get to the hair. And then you're going to do the same thing over here. So hold control, zoom out, hold control and zoom in using my mouse wheel. I'm going to click off the canvas to start and then click up here and just click and drag my mouse. And that's going to create a curve and then click up here. So I'm gonna have to adjust this handle. So I'll click on the node and here's the handle right here. I can click and drag the handle and now our curve looks a lot better. So now we're just gonna continue this on. Just click and drag to create curves and you can always click and drag the curve itself as well. And then click and drag up here. So once we get to the actual hair and let me make sure I'm actually inside of the strap there. So hold control, zoom in. Once we get to the actual hair, we don't need to worry as much about the details. And I'll use the space bar to move up. So we're just gonna click around the hair very loosely. This will save us some time and it'll increase the accuracy of the background removal. So let's come over here to the nose. I do want to take time on the nose because this is not going to be included when we select all the hair. And hold control, zoom in. You can always click on a node like I've been doing and just reposition it if you need to. And let's just continue and make sure I adjust this handle so the curve looks right. I'm not going to keep this little area of hair because I found in doing this that it didn't really look great regardless of whether or not I kept it. So I'm just gonna leave it out. And there we got the lips. So I do have to correct this handle. And I'm just very quickly clicking and dragging my mouse. And once again, once we get to the hair, we can get a good chunk of it, but we don't really need to worry about the details yet. And once I get back here, I do want to make sure that I spend time on the body here. And hold control and zoom out and use the space bar to move around on the image. The space bar is pretty much like the hand tool, if I haven't already said that. 
And let me come up top here and correct this. And hold control, zoom out, use the space bar as the hand tool. So now when I'm on my last node, I'll hold the control key and hover over the first node I created. You'll see that my little mouse pointer will change. So that means we're creating a union. So I'll click on that. And that's going to create a union between our first and last node. So hold the space bar, hold control, zoom in. I also want to just select this area out. So I'll hold the shift key and click and then click and drag my mouse and just continue on like I would any other path. Just adjust the handle there. Hold control and click. Click on this handle here, hold control, click and drag that handle out. And there we go. All right, once that's done, I'll come over here and click selection from path. That'll give us a selection area. Let me grab the move tool. And now I can come over here to the background remove layer, right click and go to add layer mask. We're going to choose selection here and click add. And if I hide the original layer and hit control shift A, which is going to deselect that, I can also go to select none. You can see the body portion looks really good right now, but the hair obviously looks weird. So now we're going to get to the hair. So let me unhide this. And we're going to click back on the original layer. So to select the finer details of the hair, we're going to use what's called the foreground select tool in GIMP. There's not really any program premium free. Otherwise that is good at selecting the finer details of hair in a photo. That's kind of the holy grail of photo manipulation, but GIMP does a pretty good job, especially considering it's free software. So let's come over here and we're going to click and hold on the third tool group and just hover your mouse over foreground select and release. And I'm not going to select the entire model. I'm just going to select the hair. So I'll hold control and zoom in. And I'm going to click and drag with the foreground select tool around the hair. And one big tip here is I'm going to come inside once the nose interrupts the hair and then come back up and just connect this and release. And I'll hit the enter key. So anytime you have a disruption like this with the hair where, you know, part of the body is sticking out, you want to just cut that off there. You can always come back to the other parts of the hair later, but that's just going to make it much easier for GIMP's algorithm to detect the hair versus everything else. Anytime you include less colors in here, it just makes it easier for the algorithm. So that's what we're doing. We're separating the colors of the hair from the rest of the body. And now I'm going to increase the size of my brush that shows up here using the right bracket on my keyboard. And by the way, I have feather edges checked and the radius is set to three. But now what I'll do is just click and drag my mouse. And I'm just selecting all of the foreground areas here. So just the hair and I'll decrease using the left bracket on my keyboard. So I don't need to be too detailed with this process. So once I've selected a fair amount here, I'm just going to hit the enter key. And as you can see, it's already done a really good job of selecting the hair. I'll hold control and zoom in. So if you see any areas, any major areas overlapping with blue, you can always just paint those in using the draw foreground tool there. So let me hold control, zoom out and hold control, zoom in. So this all looks pretty good to me. Maybe just paint this part in. There we go. So I'll hold control, zoom out again. And once you're ready, just hit the enter key. So there's our selection area. It looks pretty off right now because you can see the selection goes outside. The reason for that is some of this is partially selected. Same with some of the areas outside of the selection boundary. Some of those are partially selected. So what we'll do is click on the background removed layer mask and click and drag the white color inside the selection area and release. And now I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. And if I hide the original layer, you'll see now the background is removed and it's kept in some of the details of the hair. And now we just need to do this portion here as well. So let's bring back the original layer, click on that. 
And with the foreground select tool, I'll hold control and zoom in. And we're just going to loosely select this. Once again, we're going to paint this. Hold control, zoom in. Paint this area here and hit the enter key. Hold control, zoom out. And I'll hit the enter key again. And then once again, we'll click on the layer mask and just click and drag the white color into the selection area. Control shift A to deselect that. And now we'll hide the original. And there you can see our background has been removed. So you can still refine this since it is a layer mask. So right now you can see we've got a bunch of details from the hair here, but that could maybe be too much for some of you guys. You can also turn off the feathering that I had turned on with the foreground select tool. So here I am in the tool. Feather edges is turned on for me. You can either turn this down and let me just reset that. So I can either turn this down using the up or down arrows or just turn it off entirely. Or you can grab the paintbrush tool and let me just reset this back to the defaults. And with black as your color, and let's say we turn the hardness down, you can always come in here and paint out any areas maybe you don't want to keep. And that's just one example of what you can do. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.